So, Mr. Andrew, actually, uh, thank you for joining joining us today. Um, uh, actually, a few weeks back, we were discussing about the increasing demand for U.S. CPAs across Canada. And of course, as a professional and expert in the field, we thought it would be best to be to have this explained by you uh, and to really discuss the supply versus demand of U.S. CPAs in Canada. So first of all, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, <laughs> but fine, and, and a cold, snowy day. <laughs> exactly. Well, I hope this gets better. And actually, the snow is not really heavy in Jan for Canada, right? That's what I know. <laughs> yeah, well, depends where you live in the country. In certain parts, it's worse than others. Uh, yes, Typically maybe. not that bad in Ontario and uh, in Toronto, but in Montreal, it's pretty bad. Well, stay warm at home. <laughs> Uh, so Mr. Andrew actually um, we get asked these questions a lot and we thought like we could put them all together and discuss them in this like interview or if I can say so one of the most frequent questions asked for us is like is the USDPA valued in Canada like is it worth it so uh, the short answer to your question is yes, and I speak to it. I speak about that from experience. So when I became a Canadian CA in 1995, um, you know, I obtained the US CPA right away. And the reason the reason I decided to do that at the time was because back then you had two, you had different accounting standards. You had Canadian standards and you had US standards. Yeah. And because of the way the Canadian economy is set up in terms of like a lot of U.S. companies invest in Canada and those U.S. companies report under U.S. GAAP. Yeah. So it's important to, you know, to understand. And when I obtained the U.S. CPA, it was important to understand U.S. GAAP. And you would actually find many Canadian CAs at that time after obtaining a Canadian CA would also obtain a U.S. CPA. So in fact, if you look at their, their you know, not, not, not the majority, but many Canadian CAs also have a US CPA, you can tell from their LinkedIn profile or their business card. Um, and I have several colleagues at KPMG that I know um, have their US CPA. True, so true. that was back in 1994, 1995. Your question obviously is with respect to today. And I would, um, even though standards over the years have harmonized, right? So mm -hmm. we've gone from Canadian gap and whatever gap to IFRS, right? So yeah. a lot of the standards of the sp country specific standards have gone away and have been replaced with IFRS. Um, but US GAAP still exists separately, you know? And yes, over the years, the US has been trying to harmonize to combine its US its GAAP standards with IFRS, but there's still some areas of differences. So mm -hmm. in my view, it's still important to understand US GAAP. And in fact, you know, it's funny, I was completing a, um, I was completing a, an internal work paper, a KPMG internal work paper recently. And, and basically it's a work paper that you complete to indicate your knowledge in certain accounting standards, right? Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the, the boxes had US GAAP on it. You know, it had obviously Canadian GAAP IFRS, uh, mm -hmm. but it also had US GAAP. And mm -hmm. if you're working on a file where that company reports under US GAAP, you have to check that box. Right? Okay. And, if you, and if you don't know U.S. GAAP, you can't work on that company, right, in terms of the audit. So it's still relevant. And the other reason why it's relevant, um, not just because U.S. GAAP is still somewhat separate from IFRS, but the Canadian economy in, in 2022 is still the same as it was in, 20, in 1995, meaning that a lot of U.S. companies invest in Canada, and these are U.S. public companies, yeah. which means that they trade in the U.S. and are subject to the U.S. rules, right? Yeah. And so those U.S. companies that are invested in Canada, many of those companies report under U.S. GAAP, right? Yeah. And so, so having that knowledge of U.S. GAAP is still important. Now, and I know it's a long answer, but even if they did not report under U.S. GAAP for say if they were reporting under IFRS, your U.S. CPA, when you actually do the U.S. CPA and you're, you're studying U.S. GAAP, to a large extent, you're also studying IFRS. Okay? Yes. So you are learning IFRS when you're doing your US CPA um, and you're also learning US GAAP. So yes, it is still, I mean, if I was a, you know, a student deciding which accounting designation and I had different choices in front of me, I wouldn't rank one, let's say the Canadian one above the US uh, designation. I would basically choose the one that works for me 
yes. and that would kind of help me in terms of my career um, development and advancement. Exactly, like having specifically tackling that part of career opportunities. So when we talk about like US CPAs in Canada, I think you mentioned it briefly, but maybe if you can give us more options available for Canadians uh, when they do the U.S. CPA as in career options, if I can say, like what job titles they might get when they have the U.S. CPA. So if you are a Canadian with a U.S. CPA, okay, you can work in an accounting firm. Mm -hmm. We have, I know, in KPMG and I'm sure for the other firms. And big, big, yeah, big, big firms. firms. Yeah. You have uh, individuals that, um, you know, may just have a U.S. CPA. Um, the firms will often have people from a different country, Australia, UK, whatever, come to Canada to work and work in accounting and auditing. And obviously they don't have a Canadian CA, right? Yes. They'll have a, a designation, whatever that designation is. So, um, a, you know, we're having a US CPA would allow you to, to work for an accounting firm. Yeah. Um, it would also allow you to work in a non-accounting firm. So in what's called industry, Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, remember, it's not so much the designation you have, it's the knowledge that comes with it, right? True, exactly. And I would, I would argue the knowledge that comes with a C U.S. CPA is equivalent, quite frankly, to the knowledge that comes with a Canadian CPA. Yes. And it's not as if the rules are so radically different. Like, you know, you can, maybe you can argue in 1994, 1995, that U.S. gap was so different from Canadian gap mm -hmm. that you needed to have a Canadian you know, designation to work in Canada and a U.S. designation to work in the U.S. The standards are so pretty similar today that your U.S. designation knowledge is very equivalent to your Canadian designation, i.e. CPA knowledge. So there's a lot of similarities between the, between the two designations, Canadian CPA and U.S. CPA. So yeah, having the U.S. CPA would allow you to work in many of the same capacities and the same functions as having the Canadian C. Uh, CPA. The other but thing focusing is, on the U.S. gap and those standards, if I could say. Sorry, say that again. I mean, like if they have the U.S. CPA, it makes them focus more on the U.S. part of the work, like U.S. gap and uh, such laws. Correct? Yes. Yeah, so when you get the U.S. CPA, yes, you're studying U.S. gap. But as I mentioned earlier, when you're studying U.S. gap, you're also studying IFRS. True. Which is Canadian gap. The financial so, reporting standards. Yes. Yeah, so it's not as if you're studying U.S. GAAP and you're studying something that's totally different from IFRS. So in Canada, you know, to become a Canadian CPA, you study IFRS. So mm -hmm. to, to become a U.S. CPA, you're studying U.S. GAAP, but there's a lot of similarities. They intersect the at some point. Ex exactly. Mm -hmm. So it's not as if you're at a disadvantage, basically. If anything, okay. perhaps you're at more of an advantage because sure. you have a designation that is kind of unique and different and gives you something that maybe it can. One of the reasons why I obtained the U.S. CPA when I did after getting the Canadian CA in 1995 was because I wanted to distinguish myself from my colleagues. And by and that's why a lot of other Canadian CAs did so at the time. And one of the ways I was able to distinguish myself was by getting the U.S. CPA at the time. So I had the U.S. CPA and the Canadian CA. Okay. And I can tell you, I can tell you because I experienced it, that that distinguishing sort of thing that I did helped me in my career. It helped, me to, it helped me because I was able to do things that my colleagues with a Canadian CA could not do. True. I think it's still the case, by the way. It is still the case. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like getting the US CPA, as I said, you're learning, it's almost like you're learning two things. You're learning US GAP and you're also and learning IFRS. IFRS, true, yes. true. Yeah. I love the answer. Like, I, I hope this would help a lot of people understand maybe the opportunities. And I think you mentioned the benefits uh, as a Canadian uh, to earn the U.S. CPA. So I think you already mentioned the benefits. So I'm going to just move to the other questions in which I also believe you mentioned in the first part of your introduction. But again, do you believe that U.S. CPA um, uh, are recognized by employers in Canada? If I want to say Canadian employers, not American companies here in Canada. Yes, yes they are. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, before the change to the CPA designation in Canada, you yeah. had CAs, mm -hmm. right? Remember, yes. and obviously you had other designations. 
Now, the Canadian quote CA is the Canadian CPA. So when an employer is looking at a resume, they don't see CA, they see CPA. Mm -hmm. so many employers might not even distinguish Canadian CPA, US CPA. US. All they see is CPA. Ultimately, in my opinion, you know, and I've been in this business for over 20 years, what really matters, honestly, is not the designation you have, it's the knowledge that you have. It's so what you what can do. Seen. Like you can have a hundred designations, but if you don't know it to do anything, it doesn't matter, right? You can have no designation. If you know how to do whatever it is, if you have the knowledge to do something, that's what matters. What the designation will do, right? Whether it's US, Canadian, what it will do, it will, it will give you an opportunity to be able to do things, to be, to be exposed True. to things, right? Yes. And so when you apply for a job, if it's your first job after school and you just say I have a CPA, well, you've met the bar. You have a designation. You have a CPA. Whether it's U.S. or Canadian, it doesn't matter because they know that you've gone through a learning process to get there. So you've sure. met that bar of getting the CPA. Obviously, if you didn't have a CPA and somebody else has a CPA, they're ahead of you. Right? Sure. So by getting they outstand. The, exactly. By getting the CPA, you've met the minimum bar. Right now, what comes? So you know, my view has always been that your your designation. And your education will get you your first job. What will get you your second and third job is your experience. Experience, the efforts, exactly. Yeah. Very yeah. true, very true. And actually, just to uh, highlight on how much employers now are looking for US CPAs as well, maybe because we're discussing the US CPA, I want to focus on that. It's that we're hosting several recruitment sessions with those big accounting and auditing firms because mm -hmm. of the need. So we've been uh, reached out from a lot of big four companies and other accounting firms telling us that we really need U.S. CPAs and, and we're not finding much. So we want to highlight on the importance, raise awareness through universities, and we want to try to push our staff maybe or our future staff to really uh, take this into consideration and start thinking about undergoing the CPA uh, in general because, yes, it is really important. And the other thing, you know, getting the U.S. CPA will allow you to do is to work in U.S. tax. We yes. have um, uh, the big four of accounting firms and quite frankly, even Canadian companies that has yeah. uh, that have operations in the U.S. True, true. You know, they need to do U.S. Uh, tax filings yeah. and so on. And so if you're a, um, a U.S. CPA, and in fact, I'll be honest, over the years I've been involved in this um, uh, CPA lecturing program for many years and I have seen some former students in this program yes. join a U.S. tax group KPMG or another firm so the other, the other benefit is that having the U.S. CPA will allow you to work in U.S. tax and I'll tell you something that the salaries of individuals in that area tend to be a bit higher and the yes. reason is because there's not a lot of U.S. tax people in Canada to, to be hired so yes. it's a supply and demand issue right they, there's a there's a demand, but not a lot of supply, so it drives up salaries. Yes, actually, uh, this is the main point where we're we wanted to discuss and wrap the session with this because that's very true, and we've been hearing that a lot, and we know the difference in salaries, and actually, it's out there. So no need for us to mention. They can do the research and see the difference. But a question out of the box, actually. Do you think like this demand will continue or do you believe at some point we will have enough U.S. CPAs in Canada? Um, I think it will continue. So, you know, one of one of the things that um, is an issue right now is uh, there's a there's a, a declining demand or the declining supply of CPAs, mm -hmm. right? whether it's Canadian, U.S. Or the, US. The, there's a, the, the need is getting greater than the supply that exists. Okay. And so, which is why, again, having the U.S. CPA, because there are not that many sort of homegrown Canadian CPAs. Yes. Right? So the employers are looking, you know, OK, you have a CPA. It's not a Canadian one. It's a U.S. one. It's just as good. It, it works. Right. Because yes. there's not enough. There's not enough Canadian CPA. So if anything, the labor market is going to get tighter and tighter in terms of the demand is going to be there, but the supply won't be there. And so what that will do is continue to drive up salaries. Like we're seeing it, we're seeing it now in certain areas, uh, you yeah. know, 
and I won't obviously reveal internal information, <laughs> the internal information, but <laughs> we're seeing now that salaries are being driven up because the labor market is so tight to find CPAs, to find, you know, talented people that you need. So, yeah, I think they're, I think if anything, it's going to, you know, it's going to be a buyer's market, so to speak. <laughs> Not an, not, a, not an employer's market, but an employee's <laughs> But like, do you think uh, as one of like coming from uh, a big four actually and working with one of the big fours, do you believe like your training is enough or you strongly believe that the student or the candidate should work on themselves to obtain this professional certification? Is it enough to just undergo training? Because I know for a fact, as you mentioned, that definitely it's even if you have all of these certifications if you do not do the efforts and the work and get like the experience needed you'll stay where you are but like speaking in the from the other side do you believe like they should like this <laughs> alone the experience alone and the training alone will help or they need that boost of education to come in no i mean you know for many jobs not for all jobs there's a base level of competence education and so on, right? So you need to have a university degree or a designation or whatever. There's a base level of com of, of uh, competence. And as I, that's why I said before, like your designation, whether it's accounting, legal, whatever, will get you your first job, but it will not get you the second and third. So once you have that base level, the designation CPA, you then have to put that to good use. And the way you put mm -hmm. that to good use is when you join a firm, you do great work, you know, you, you make sure you excel because I'll be honest with you, the learning that's going to come is not going to be from in the classroom. Like once you've gotten your basic designation, the learning yeah. will come from actually, like when I uh, obtained my Canadian CA and the US CPA in 1996 was the last year, like the, 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 the learning curve from then onwards was just like a rocket ship. Right? Wow. Because you, you, you're you doing so much in, in different sectors and in different industries that you're learning in the best environment possible on the job. And okay. that, that type of learning is much better than sitting in a classroom, you know, being taught academically uh, and learning theory. Right. So, yes, you need that training. You need that academic training. You need that theory to get the designation to get you that job. But it's it's only going to take you to getting the job to excel you need to, to obviously to, to to work now having said that having said yes. that you know education is an, is a good thing and and um you know i'm a believer in, in learning is a lifelong pursuit right mm -hmm. so True. yes you, you get your designation but one of the things that you need to do to keep your designation right the continued and, professional like yeah, education exactly yeah because yeah. there's a recognition that things will change over time Yes. But the learning, the, the, the experience you're going to get from working is great experience, but you need to maintain your knowledge because the rules will change. The sure. accounting standards will change and you need to be up to date on those rules. So it doesn't mean you have to go back and get another designation mm -hmm. or get a master's degree or whatever, but you'll need ongoing training, professional exactly. development training. Exactly. Actually, the same applies to doctors, to engineers and to many other sectors. So actually, it's more important to have the business sector specifically the auditing accounting taxation sector to be developing more because we're seeing what's happening in the world with all of these economical changes so yep. i believe keeping up with uh with what's up today and really moving forward would keep us moving in a healthier direction to hopefully yep. maintain a healthier economy in the future yep um actually uh, yesterday, I was telling you by the beginning of our call uh, before we started recording that I got a question and I was like, okay, that's important because you know for a fact that what's really nice about the US CPA as a professional certification is that it allows you to work abroad. But do you think as a Canadian obtaining the US CPA, would mm -hmm. there be opportunities for those people in the US? Yes, and I'll I'll give you an example. So Canadians, a, a Canadian are obtaining the US CPA, right? That's your question? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, no, actually, my question specifically is like, if I am a Canadian and I get the US CPA, do I have uh, opportunities waiting for me in the US? Would yeah, I be recognized in the yeah, US? That's, yes. That's a question I was going to answer. <laughs> yeah. So I have a former student. I'm just thinking of one person, yes, others. But I remember she was a, a former student in my in my sessions, 
um, when they were back in in person, live classroom yes. session. And um, you know, she's obviously in Canada and obtaining the US CPA. And so she would, um, you know, reach out to me for advice, kind of a mentoring type thing. And she um, had family in the US and wanted to be close to family. So once she obtained her Canadian, or sorry, US CPA living in Canada, she decided, you know, I'm going to explore opportunities in the US. And she quickly was able to get a job wow. um, in a US CPA firm. And so she, she discussed the opportunity with me, what it entailed and whether she should accept it and so on. Um, and, you know, she had some, because uh, she didn't have a green card at the time, a US okay. green card. So she had to work through the immigration stuff. But obviously having the US CPA was helpful in getting the green card because you're a skilled individual, right? You have skills and so on. And so she um, um, accepted an offer with a US CPA firm. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, at first she wasn't crazy about the salary, but I told her it's your first job. You know, you, your CPA is helping you to get that first job. When you get the job and if you excel on the job, you, the salary will, will come, right? So she worked there for, I think, just over a year and a half. And then um, she got an offer, a better offer from another firm in the U.S., right? Wow. It goes back to my point about the demand. And, you know, I talk about the demand here in Canada. There's a, a demand for CPAs. The demand in the U.S. is much greater. True. Right? And in much the Middle greater. East, actually, too. And that's why they're, you know, they're looking in Canada and in the Middle East and elsewhere for U.S. CPAs because the demand is much greater. So this person being in Canada was able to get a job in the U.S. because there's just not enough CPAs. So anyways, after working at that, that first firm, she got a, a, a job, an offer, a better offer, more money. Just the terms were much better. And she even said to me, you know what, you're right about, because she wasn't going to take that first job because the money wasn't what she was expecting. And I told her, you know, it's your first job. Take that chance. <laughs> not, not so much take a chance, but show them how great you are. And then the money will come. Well, as I said, she got a better offer, more money. And she said she appreciated the advice about, because she was going to turn the job down, right? And if she had yeah. turned it down, she would have not gotten that other opportunity. And so she accepted that other job. And I, we, have, we haven't communicated in a while, but she's doing well, you know, in the U.S. She's probably now advanced because the last time I communicated with her was probably about a year ago. She's yeah. probably advanced in terms of being promoted. And obviously, I'm sure she's gotten, you know, salary increases. So that's just one example of someone I encountered over the years and I mentored. I couldn't show you the emails back and forth. She and I exactly. communicated. And I even looked at her resume for her when she was accepting that first job and helped her with it. So yes, the short, I guess the long answer, but the short answer to your <laughs> question is, yeah, if you're, if you're a Canadian getting a US CPA and you decide, you know, you don't want to work in Canada or you want to move to the US, yeah. definitely there are opportunities there. Absolutely. And, you know, you have a US CPA, so they, they know what that means. Right? True. <laughs> to get a US CPA, regardless of where you are in the world, you got to go through the same process, right? Exactly. So a US it's employer. The same process. Yeah, the US employer knows that, okay, you have a C US CPA, what that means from their standpoint. So. Exactly. And actually, speaking of the process, we also get the question like, are the exams uh, the same if we sit for the exams in Canada or like in? the Middle East or in the U.S., are they the same? So we always tell them, yes, it's the same exam, the same application process. So what you have to do is, first of all, uh, evaluate your transcript and see if you have enough accounting credits or university credits to have you uh, go through one of the state boards. They have like around 50 state boards in which you can choose any if you are outside of the U.S. And accordingly, see if you fit those requirements, you just do your evaluation through NASBA or FATS based on which uh, which state board. And afterwards, you, you apply, you start like working and sitting and preparing for your exams through Morgan or through self-study. And afterwards, you sit, prepare for your first exam, sit for the exam, and voila, you're done for exams without even noticing because I know once you start, you're, you're in the process and you're done. Absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, it's the same to your point, no matter where you're in the world, it's the same. Pro you're ultimately writing the same exam as somebody in the U.S., basically. Exactly. Exactly. And from from your I know you applied way back in the time, but like how much time did it take you to study? How much effort did you put into the program? And back well, then you had CDs. It was harder to keep up to date on like you didn't have those questions sinking because you have Internet access all the time now. 
but back in the day it was a CD, I believe, or I don't know what you had. <laughs> yeah, if, you know, honestly, I think it was harder when yeah. I did it, the process of studying, because uh, I'm dating myself, I guess. Like now, essentially, when you prepare, like the simulations, everything is online, right? Sure. You just go on and you complete. I had booklets <laughs> for the questions, um, and they were like, uh, you know, yeah, individual booklets. Um, so when I completed my Canadian CA in 1995, I think it was, um, I started, even before I got my results for the Canadian CA, I started studying for the US CPA because okay. my goal was to do that. And so because I, like, my mind was still very much fresh in accounting. So I was still, I knew my accounting stuff, right? So when I studied for the US CPA, I obviously did study US GAP and, and GAS, audit standards. Yes. I also studied BEC um, and regulation, right? Okay. I studied all the four parts. When I wrote the exam, because I had my Canadian CA, I wrote a special exam. I didn't write the kind of, I wrote, True. I wrote a special exam, but covering all four parts, all four parts. We did okay. US, GAP, US gas, BEC regulation. They might have changed it over the years, but I, yes. I wrote all four parts. It was just a special exam for people with a designation already. And, um, and I spent that summer, the summer before I wrote, um, working questions. And it's the same message I tell to the students. And if you want to pass the exam, if you want to increase your chance of passing the exam, you've got to work questions, right? Okay. Because when you're working questions, you're basically preparing yourself to actually write the exam. Because a lot of the questions you're going to see in your homework, you will see when you sit for the exam. And yes. I remember, you know, and I tell students this when I actually... So I wrote my exam, and, and, and back then you had to travel to the States. You probably still do today. I wrote it in No, Buffalo. actually, it's in Canada now, so they yeah. can sit for the exam in Canada. Much harder process when I did it. <laughs> I remember going to Buffalo and spending the night in Buffalo, oh. and spending the night in a hotel, and then the next morning going to the uh, center to write the exam. Um, and so I, when I actually sat for the exam, like so many of the questions I saw <laughs> I were questions that I, I was thinking to myself, boy, that looks familiar. It's looked familiar. Why? Because I'd done so many questions. Like a lot of those questions were on the exam. They changed things around, right? Because yeah, my view is being in accounting now for all these years, there's only so many different ways to test on inventory or receivables right. or fixed assets or whatever, right? Because it is, you know, it is what it is, right? When you're talking about AR, <laughs> right? so there's only so many different ways to test on the particular topic. Yeah. And and so the number of questions that I did in each area prepared me for for the exam, such that a lot of the questions on my exam I had seen before. And mm -hmm. you know that before, like the exam used to be disclosed, like all CP exams. Once the exam was written, they would release the questions, right? I don't okay. Know but now they don't do that. They release selected questions. Exactly. And I think uh, this is my view. It's not been mm -hmm. corroborated by anybody. I think the reason why they stopped releasing the exam questions and only release selected questions, because yes. they, they use a lot of the questions on, on other, on future exams. True. That's right? very true. Because there's, you know, and so you would see like, um, in fact, when I was preparing and the booklet used to have the question and yes. the exams that that question was on. So you'd see like a particular question and it would say it was on the 92 exam, 94 exam, 96 exam, 98. So the oh. same question was on many different exams or multiple exams. And so there was a lot of questions being repeated and repeated over and over and again. So my view or my thinking is the reason why they stopped releasing the entire exam and just select the questions because they're going to use those same questions again on future exams. Exactly, exactly. And you studied with Becker by, back in the day, right? I did. I studied with uh, um, uh, Newt Becker. Um, used to be, I don't know if you remember, Newt, Newt Becker used to be the guy that was on the tape. You know, yes. Back, back when it was done that way. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, uh, Becker. I studied with Becker. Actually, our CEO is a CPA himself, and he used to, he, he used to tell us about his experience that he used to travel from Canada every like weekend or so to uh, either sit for the classes sometimes or uh, do the exams. So he also had this journey. So now it's way easier. No need to travel anywhere. Most countries have the uh, exams uh, and parametric testing centers where you can sit for the exams. Now in Canada, you have like several testing centers. So yeah, it has become way easier.
I, um, one of the concerns I had, and I've heard of students actually until they change it recently. One of the concerns when you, you used to have to go to the U.S. is whether you'd be stopped at the border and couldn't get in. Because, <laughs> yeah. because you know, the next day is your exam. And if you get stopped at the border, that's it. Too bad, right? Exactly. Too bad. Um, now, I know you've spoken about this. Maybe you've given hundreds of advice. But like, is there something specific you always want to share or would like to share with whoever is thinking to go through that path? Like something maybe to highlight on specifically? In terms of becoming a CPA or getting the CPA? Yes, yes. Any advice you think is worth giving out to students thinking or pursuing the CPA? Well, so good question. Very good question. So as someone who has written the Canadian CA exam, and the USCP exam, and I've mm -hmm. done other professional exams. The one thing I and I try to I tell to students is what I like about the USCP exam is how practical it is. And what I mean about practical is like when I wrote <laughs> when I wrote the Canadian CA exam in 1995. Um, you know, back then there were four papers you did over four days, and mm -hmm. Like the the nature of the Canadian CA exam, and I think it's still the case today, the Canadian CPA, is you're given a question like day one, it's like a 30 page question, one question on day one. And then at the very end of the question, they ask you to prepare the report. Okay. That's the question, right? So a 30 page of facts, right? And diagrams and exhibits. And at the, the end, they say, prepare the report. So they're asking you just out of university to think and function like a partner. And that, that doesn't happen until maybe 20 years of 15, 20 years of practice, right? Mm -hmm. Learning. Yes. But but a, a student fresh out of university, they're asking that person to think like a partner and to prepare a report that a partner would prepare. Not very practical, in my opinion. Not very practical. I mean, maybe they have a reason for that. Whereas the USCP exam, for someone fresh out of university, the exam teaches you how to do things. Right. So, for example, inventory, accounting for inventory, accounting for fixed assets, business combination, like they test specific things. In other words, the US CPA exam is more practical and less theoretical. Less Very theoretical. true. The Canadian exam is more theoretical and less practical. Okay? Sure. That's what we always say. And that's what I like about the US, uh, the, the US CPA exam. Again, someone who has written both. I really like the fact that the USCP exam is teaching you how to do things, right? In other words, I'm going to work as a USCPA. I need to know how to do, and it teaches you how to do things. And I'll be honest with you, I work with um, US colleagues. You know, I'm obviously in Canada and I work with US colleagues in, in KPMG that have USCPAs. And, you know, they write a different exam, but they, they are so smart and they know the issues, right? Because in going through that process, they have done, uh, and, and, and preparing for the US CPA, they are learning how to do specific things, right? Yes. They speak to those specific things. Yeah, you might know the accounting theory better than they do, but who cares <laughs> at the end of the day, right? True. You'll eventually both learn the theory, but at that stage in your career, when you're starting out, you want to learn how to do things, and that's what the US CPA exam does. And, and I think that aspect of the exam, I really, really like. And, and yeah. honestly, I've been involved in this program since 1998. And that's one of the reasons why I still stay. Because of that, Amazing. you know, it helps me to keep up to date on accounting issues and whatever the relevant topic is, right? Because it's so practical, right? True. That's one of the, if this exam was mostly theoretical, I mean, after a while, my eyes would gloss over and I would just, but it's so practical. That's one of the reasons why I still do. And I'll be honest with you. A lot of the things I learned in terms of certain specific areas, business combination, yeah. pension accounting, income taxes, whatever, I use on my job. Wow. Even after I, I love that. 20 plus, <laughs> even after 20 plus years at, at 19 as a partner, I, I use stuff I learned from this program on my in my day-to-day -day job. I kid you not. Amazing you said that because some people think when we tell them 
like when we explain to them about the USTK, they think like we're overstaying it, but having it come from a professional, that's very true. And they will actually notice that once they're done and with their USTPA and start using it in their job. So thank you so much for actually saying that. And thank you for sharing your experience. And we're so happy to have you as one of our instructors. Uh, we know how much our students enjoy the sessions with you. Uh, anything would uh, like to wrap this up? Do you like to say like any final words? Well, uh, you know, I think one of the uh, one of the things I like to to hear um, after delivering, I mean, preparing pre preparing and delivering the lecture on Saturdays is not easy. No. You know, I'm giving up typically an entire day, even though the lecture is from ten to two. My lectures usually go from ten to three because we know. you know I I try to make sure the students can understand, and I make sure that I'm helping them and not just you go. Start. Yeah. all the time <laughs> yeah so um you know it, it's 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 and after the lecture i'm drained physically mentally right so it's, it's a full day but what i really like is when i hear from students afterwards that they've passed because it basically means that what i did in my small part because obviously most of the work is done by them but my small part was helpful in their ultimately succeeding on the exam so you know, I think one of the satisfactions, and again, one of the reasons I continue to do this is to to kind of help people to succeed. And I, I really appreciate and like to hear back from students that, you know, that they're, they've passed the exam. And in some cases, I, still, I hear from students that, um, you know, are succeeding in their job. I'll give another example. I mentioned before that, that, that former student who's in the US. Again, over the years, I've had students in this program that have been recruited to KPMG, um, a couple that, sure. that I can take off off the top of my head. Um, and one guy, again, got his US CPA, went to work for KPMG, um, and, uh, and actually within a few years, he got promoted to senior manager. He's no longer with KPMG, but he's a partner in a new firm, a different firm wow. that he joined. And again, he only has his Canadian uh, his US CPA. Uh, another person, this is a female person, um, you know, it's funny with her, because I remember her specifically when I first, um, this was back when we lectured in person, and um, she was so quiet and so timid, and, you know, she approached me, and and anyways, I helped her get into KPMG, and it's funny, the, the, the change in her confidence in a couple of years was just amazing. She went from a very shy, timid, reserved person <laughs> to someone who was very, after a few years, confident and actually quite bold in some cases. And, you know, she's, um, she ended up, um, um, she's joined, started, I think, in my group in KPMG and then went to the, uh, the financial institutions group, she's got married and has a couple of kids and uh, doing very well. Uh, I don't know if she's still with the firm because she's no longer part of my group, but, you know, got promoted as well. And, and so experiences like that over the years, both in terms of students passing the exam and doing well, but also succeeding in their career. And knowing that the, the, the basis for that success, the genesis, was them going through this program. So True. you see that and you think, you know, I did a good thing. I helped them to the, as much as I could in terms of succeeding in the exam. And I love to hear back from students that, that you know, that they, they did well on the exam and, you know, they're moving on to bigger and better things. So that's, I guess, would be my final word. Actually, it makes, uh, I think it makes you proud. It makes us proud. and. Um... A big thank you goes for you, actually, as instructors, but we know for a fact that they do the big effort, but your guidance helps them a lot. So thank you so much, Mr. Andrew. We look forward to having you for the next 20 years, if you are oh, willing no. to, like, <laughs> if you are willing to. Uh, and thank you so much for giving me from your time to really put up on this uh, chit chat and try to help people understand more on the importance of the USDPA. We will have more maybe uh, discussions on the topic with time, but thank you so much. Wishing you a great day ahead. Thank you. My pleasure. And, and very happy to do this. If I can help students deciding whether or not to uh, pursue the designation, hopefully my comments will help them. So my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. The pleasure is ours. Have a great day. Thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, dear. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye, dear. Bye.